Welcome painters, last video of the series of how to paint Mephiston. Today I will teach you how to paint a cool sword. I am going to use both the airbrush and the brush, so let's do this! I will paint the blade with the airbrush. So as not to soil the fabric, which is already painted, I will use transparent film to protect it. Take a little and wrap the figure. Cover it well, so we won't stain it. Use masking tape from Vallejo. Here's the reference. I will affix the transparent film to the holder. This is good, but I'll put out a little more on. Also at the top, and now our mini is protected. I will use dark sea blue as the base color. I add a little bit to the plastic blister and add some water. Since this color is from the model color range, we can just use water. Mix them well. I will use the Infinity CR Plus with a 0.15 millimeter needle and set the pressure to 1.8 bar. I test out and apply the base color. We are applying thin layers. If I see that it is very wet, I help myself with the hair dryer to dry the color. I apply another thin layer. And so on until the desired color is achieved. Here you can see the final result. I applied three or four thin coats. I will use Russian Tank Crew 1 from the Panzer Aces range for the first highlight. I put the color in the blister, add some water, and stir it very well. The dilution must be perfect. And for those of you who are new to the channel, I'll leave a link where I talk about the paint dilution for the airbrush, a very useful video which I also recommend watching. Good. I make sure that the dilution is perfect. On a piece of paper, or try it on the hand too, and I will apply the first highlights. I'm going to focus on the upper part of the sword, the middle and the tip. As I always say, apply thin layers. The more layers on the same area, the more intense the color becomes. So we will achieve good results. Go slowly. It's better. Look in the box how I press the trigger. I often get asked about this by many of you, so you can see it in the box. I press a little down and back so the spray is much finer. If we pull the trigger back too much, we'll get a very wide stream, and we want precision right now. So with this motion, we will have it. Here you can see the final result. 
I will use Highlight Italian Tank Crew as the second highlight. The same process, put the color on the blister, add water, and stir well. Test the airbrush. It's crucial to always try it out. And apply the second highlight. I will highlight the same parts as in the previous step to see the play of light. I highlight the top part a bit more. I also highlight this edge and on the lower part of the tip too. This way, I create contrast. A little bit on the tip. Here you can see the final result. I will apply the third highlight with white. Put it on the blister, add water, and stir so that we have perfect dilution. And put it in the airbrush. I check it. Test it on the hand too, see if it's a good spray. And it's ready. And now we apply the third highlight. I will apply more layers on the upper parts of the sword. I want the main brightness to be there. Pay close attention to how I press the trigger down and back just a tiny bit. So the spray is more precise. I keep going. I will give it a little highlight to this part at the point. The important thing about NMM is the contrast between light and shadow. And we're still on the light. <laughs> so here you can see the final result. It's time to outline the sword, and first we put all of the colors on the wet palette. I always recommend using a wet palette since colors are always kept fresh. I use the Redgrass Games brand, I like it so much. Look in the box as I make the mixture. They are shades of gray with touches of green. To outline, I mix this gray-green and add a bit of white. Outline the whole blade. The middle edge, pay close attention to the movement. I use the side of the brush and drag it. I load very little paint on the brush. That is the easiest way to paint the edges. If we load too much paint, the outline will be too thick, and we don't want that. We are looking for a fine outline. Here, you can see the final result. Next, I will add tones to the blade with the airbrush. I will use sepia wash and violet. I put both colors on the blister and add water. Mind you, the sepia wash is thinner, so add just a little bit of water. We mix both colors and put it in the airbrush. And we apply thin layers, very soft. We do not focus on the same area. We are looking for subtle tones. Light passes. 
you see that little by little the tones are coming out. Here you can see the final result. Now I'm going to apply highlights and shadows with the brush, but first I'm going to paint these parts black. As I will add some light effects to these parts later. But so that they don't bother me now, I'm going to paint them black so that I have a better view of the sword. A bit more to cover it, and let's apply shadows to the sword. To reinforce them even more. As you can see in the box, I play with sepia wash, violet, and dark sea blue, and I apply shadows. Since the key to NMM is the contrast between light and shadow. As you can see, I am applying these shadows with very thin layers. So I control the shadow's intensity. I will also highlight the lower part of the sword a bit, which needs a bit more light. So I take some white, some pale blue-gray, and some sepia wash. I mix them and highlight that area. That is the main advantage of the wet palette, as I have all of the colors on it, and they always stay fresh, so I can play with them. If I need a highlight, I highlight. If I need a shadow, I shade. I also outline the edges a bit more, apply more shadows. As you can see, I play with the colors. I also encourage you to comment on the video if you have any questions. That really helps me a lot to improve these videos. I guess this process is the most complicated, since I am playing with the lights and the shadows at the same time. I will combine the two things to improve the blade, since first we used the airbrush to mark the planes of light, then we added shadows and tones, and now we have to adjust them all by brush. Notice that the lower edge has more shadows. I keep mixing sepia wash, violet, And very important, be quite clear where the main highlight is placed. I put it on the highest part of the blade, where I reinforce it with white. I think it looks cool. It's a different sword. For those of you who like painting blades with metallic colors, I recommend this video where I explain how to paint TMM. Here's a link.
On future videos, I will explain a bit more how to paint TMM. This time, I am using an NMM technique. I also want to know your opinion. Which one do you like the most, TMM or NMM? I almost always use NMM because it's the technique that companies request the most. So now I will apply some washes with the brush. I take some black wash and blue wash. I also add a little bit of sepia wash. I will use some other washes to add more intensity to the sword. See how I load the paint and unload it on the palette. Watch in the box. In certain areas, I add more black to create greater contrast. Next, with white, I will emphasize the highlights a bit more and add some hair-thin lines to create some shine on the sword. You have to make it very soft. If you paint a line too thick, it will look very bad. It's better to load a little paint, unload it, and then apply it to the surface. The upper edge has more light and the lower edge more shadows. I reinforce this edge. We have to add more definition. Here you can see the final result. Now it is time to paint the OSL, the light effects. I put all of the colors on the wet palette. Light turquoise, blue green, white, and blue wash. I'm going to mix some of this blue with the turquoise. I use it as a base color, but leaving some black on top. I mean, imagine it's like a gem. Then the highlights must be placed on the lower area. Apply thin layers. I am focusing mostly on the bottom. And then we will always highlight the same area to increase the highlights. So we will make our sword more spectacular. I add a little bit of blue at the top to blend everything. Here, I will create some brightness. Very abrupt, but no worries, since I will apply washes later and blend them. Now, with blue-green, I highlight the lower parts. Contrast is noticeable right now. I add more blue-green. Now, I put a wash in the area where I put the dots in white and you see how it loses intensity and blends.
I add some white to blue-green and I keep highlighting. I add a white dot on the upper area to create a sparkle. I repeat the highlights on the lower part. Here's another sparkle. I reinforce it. Observe that little by little the contrast stands out. I am adding washes with blue-green to get a lighting effect. I apply a wash, let it dry, and then repeat. This will be a super cool lighting effect. I am playing with blue-green and some blue. On the upper edge there is more blue-green, and on the lower edge it has blue-green with some blue. This is really taking shape. Here you can see the final result. To paint the hilt, I will use heavy gold brown from the Game Color Extra Opaque range. This is a quite thick range, so we have to add more water, and I will mix it with sepia wash. I mix them and use this mixture as the base color, but be careful. I will apply thin layers, but softly, because I want to use the black primer as shadows. I mean, I will apply thin layers, and in some areas I will apply more. Where I apply less layers, there will be shadows. I focus on the edges, on the head, and that's the base color. I will apply some washes with orange fire to add tones to the hilt. I add some sepia wash to the orange fire and I apply it smoothly over the entire surface. So this gold is going to get some intensity from the orange, which is a very saturated color, which I am reducing with sepia wash so it is not too strong. I also add a little black on certain parts. Here you can see the final result. For the first highlight, I will use Highlight Italian Tank Crew from the Panzer Aces range and Ice Yellow. I don't want a very strong yellow, that's why I use Highlight Italian Tank Crew to reduce the intensity, because this color is like a pale green. It contains more white than yellow. So I mix both colors and I apply the first highlight. I focus on the edges to define the whole hilt, and then on this skull, I focused on the highest part. I want the main highlight to be placed here. 
To outline, I use the side of the brush, which is easier for me. I add more highlight layers to the skull. Notice it is highlighted more than the other parts of the hilt. I highlight more on the edges, too, in the middle. You see, the more I repeat a layer, the stronger the color becomes. Next, I add white to the previous mixture to add some magical touches, the so-called points of light. Last extreme highlights to make this gold shine more. I also add some tones with sepia wash or even orange fire, but it's better to add sepia wash to make the golden color less strong. Here it is, the final result. I hope this video will help you in painting Mephiston's sword, and it is also the last video of this series. I hope you like all three of the videos. Comment below with any questions you might have. What do you think about this video? Do you like it? Element Games sent me this Mephiston to hold a raffle. For a chance to win, leave a comment below. The more comments, the more chances to win. Hit the like button, share the video with your friends, and ring the bell to be notified of updates. Don't forget to click on the video description to see a full list of the products that I use. If you live in Spain, you can get all these products at Goblin Trader, in France at Hobby Shop, and in the United Kingdom at Element Games. Folks, see ya in the next video.